Dishka. No, no, no. One SVG. Welcome everyone to Squad Ops Wednesday night event. Tonight it is Operation Chainlink. I'm here with Google Trex. Hey, how's it going, buddy? It's going pretty good, man. I apologize to everyone watching the stream for the little bit of delay. We're we're in the middle of improving our servers. Um and we are in the middle of a, you know hardware upgrades and, and all that good stuff. So it's taking a little bit of uh, jumps here and there. But overall, uh, it's going to be a better experience for everyone. So I appreciate everyone hanging out and watching um, and just chatting. Um, but yeah, this is Operation Chainlink. Um, for those of you who may not know or may be new here, uh, welcome first. Um, what you're about to see here is a One Life event in, uh, in Squad. So um, everyone... Uh, everyone here will uh, will only get one life per side. Um, no medic revives, only heals. Um, and a couple other custom rules that we've set that we'll go over as the op kind of progresses along. Um, I'm going to let you guys in on... So we have about, I don't know, we have at least 10, more than 10 at this point. Jeez, uh, ops that we uh, run. It's probably closer to 15 or something like that. Um, this one is a defense of a trench and it is very it's very difficult to execute properly which is why it's so exciting um and it, it ends up being a really crazy uh, a really crazy um execution of the of the the movement so um what you're looking at on my screen right here is the trench um that will be occupied by militia uh, and pretty simply, the goal for the Russians is to kill the fob that will be placed here, and Militia is trying to defend it. Um, we have a couple custom rules, like Militia gets, I think, three Logi dumps, so they can't totally super fob. Um, sandbags can't be placed too high, so it's a little more exposed. Um, things like that. But overall, the goal here is for Russia to take over the fob that will be placed in this trench that you're looking at, um, and Militia's got to defend. While we're waiting, and while the SLs you see are getting set up, um, I'm going to go over the, the squad leaders today. So we are on Militia side right now. After this is over, um, we will flip sides. So the squad leaders for Militia today are Tedish in squad one, CMYK Matter squad two, Nasty Nate squad three, Sightless in Squad 4, and your Season Commander, Best Pony, in Squad 5. Uh, Google, you can let us know who's in who's on Russia's side. On Russia, we have Shadowed Ritual commanding tonight. He's commanded quite a few ops, very experienced guy. And his squad leaders tonight are OD Tap, Satan, Carpy, and Xbit. All of them are very experienced squad leaders and uh, do really well with keeping all the people going the right direction and, and giving them good instruction and, and generally making it a really fun op for everyone. Yeah, that is a seasoned uh, group of, of squad leaders in command over there. Um, so we do determine um, the kit uh, distribution as well as the asset distribution. So for Operation Chainlink, um, militia assets are as follows. Militia gets... Two ARs, one lat, one scout, one medic. That's their kit assignments. That's per squad. They get one times any techie that they want. Uh, it can be either SPG or, or Dishka. They get three Logis, which will dump at the beginning of the round, um, and they will use that to build their, um, their defenses in the trench or in the surrounding area. Um... Militia gets, they also get three HMG or SPG emplacements, and they get one mortar if they so choose uh, to use it. Um, as you can see, so Militia are going to be set, setting up in this trench with those Logi dumps uh, and, and, and pretty much fortifying it the best, as best they can. Uh, Russian forces need to move into the Militia fob, locate and destroy, uh, and Militia win if they're able to hold their position. Um, so it's going to be a matter of how far can they spread themselves out and then slow the advance of the Russians down. Now, the Russian assets are a little bit different. Uh, Russia gets two ARs, one LAT, one GL, one Medic. LAT, if you don't know, uh, is the uh, 
the light anti-tank kit, so it's an RPG, um, and the GL being the, the grenade launcher. Uh, they for that's again per squad. Um, they get one MTLB NSVT, which is a tracked vehicle with a machine gun on it. It's a troop transport. Um, they get a tr- a Lodgy. They do get to place a fob down. Russia does to assault uh, as a as a, a fire base. They get uh, one trans truck. They get the fob, and on that fob, like I mentioned, they get actually two um, two machine gun emplacements. Which will help aid in their push to the trench. So, Google, you've played through this out before, correct? Oh, absolutely. A couple times now. So, in your experience, that fob I just mentioned, um, that Russia gets to put down, that's going to be put down in the surrounding area. Like, where do you, where would you most likely see it? And what, like, what use do you think, or has it had before, or what do you think it'll have this time? You know, one of the most impactful uh, placements I've seen was when Russian actually circles around to the south side uh, and, and basically assaults south to north. And they use that fob to put a machine gun emplacement up on that hill. That machine gun's able to basically spray anywhere along that trench. Now, they can't see it, so they do re- require, like, spotting, which is really intense for the gunners and the people spotting as they have to get down in line of sight. But that machine gun emplacement really helps if you put it on that south side hill because it actually goes up a few probably about 30 meters or so up above the plane of that that trench there and with them having to defend that trench that machine gun is just deadly because you know right where they're at yeah i'm t- i'm inclined to agree i think um th- this op has changed a lot since new vehicles have come out mm-hmm. um this ma- this op didn't even used to be like it was on the old yeho because they reworked yeho and stuff um but in general, since it's been here, uh, I think the south side of the trench um, is probably the more popular uh, direction to be attacking from. And, and I can show you why. If you look at my screen, um, down this, there's an entire trench that's running south that actually offers pretty good defilade, like better than any defilade you're going to get. Um, and it's a good way to advance uh, up the uh, to get close to that trench. And once you get close, you can start doing some damage. Um, but on either side, there's 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 open field. So um, pretty much the south side is generally, I think, the best. Um, with the trees there and that trench, that would be my guess as to which way they're going to be coming from. Um, but, you know, it's, it's also, I mean, Shadow and Pony like to both mix it up. Uh, so I can't really say for sure <laughs> which way they're going to be going. Um, maybe both. Who knows? But um, uh, yeah. In general, sure. that's the way I've seen it play out so far. Yeah, I know Shadow really likes to to try and go for things that he's comfortable with. And I remember, I think it was last time he was either a squad lead or command when I was playing this op last, and he he really enjoyed executing from this southern hill. And he might try it again because he knows how to make it fun, how to make it effective, and really how to push off this hill. If you can see my camera right now, you can kind of see the hill that we're, look, we're talking about. This is that south hill. And basically, I don't know if you could tell really from this view. We probably can't. You're actually up quite a ways. And if you stick a – you plunk a machine gun down, like maybe right here where I'm at, as you can see by all the names ahead of me, you have a great sight line on that whole trench line right there. So, again, it's not easy to see as a gunner. But if you have somebody down there spotting, you would very easily help suppress and, and, and assist with that push. So we'll yeah. see how that goes tonight. But I, I, have, a, I have a feeling something's going to happen on this south side. Yeah. And you don't want to know something else is what's different about this now is that the fog is gone from this map. Um, oh, yeah. There used to be fog. There used to be fog um, surrounding these, you know, all around Yeho. Um, it's gone now, and so that that level of like, uh, uh, like indecision, not knowing exactly where they're coming from, that's going to be a lot harder to achieve uh, for Russia because they're going to be they're going to be um, much more exposed. So it makes me wonder if they're going to be really trying to hug the trees um, more, um, and instead of going on that southern trench that I mentioned, which kind of worked because of the fog, some whether they'll just try to just go quickly from both sides 
from the trees using that hill that you're talking about, Google, uh, as machine gun cover. I think that might be the best way to do it uh, now that the, the whole dynamic has changed with the fog disappearing. Yeah, absolutely. It, it just changes everything every time the OWI makes a, a change like that. It, it, yeah, it and, changes these and, ops, and that's what makes it fun. Like, it seems like these totally. ops are always evolving. Every time they make a change out of vehicle, change a map layer. So and, yeah, it, and not only is it just OWI, it's who's commanding, right? I mean, even that changes the ops because everyone has their own ideas about how to do stuff. Like I know Pony, who's on the defensive right now, really he is very, very good. I mean, you watch. There will be tons of barbed wire on the southern side. He is very good at, at defensive, like, fobs. Um, and he makes it really hard for people to push in. So there will be scattered wire on the south and the north, probably. And he's good at managing his economy as far as uh, uh, fob points. Um, so it just depends on who's commanding um, as to how the app is going to play out, too. I like to run more bare bones, but sometimes other people, you know, like to just dig in. And then make it a huge base. So medic should not be on lodgy. You shouldn't be on lodgy. You, you your medic, your lad, your scout are going to be the ambush team. Yeah, it looks like here on Russia, you can probably see on my screen now. Uh, we've got them lined up in these vehicles, and it looks like they have. Uh, I'll give you an exact name here, but it looks like just from experience, we have a log logistics truck, a troop transport truck, and a tracked APC, the NSVT MTLB. And they're going to be able to use these vehicles to transport troops. A lot of times they'll use this transport truck as, yeah, they use this transport truck as quick assault. MTLB is a huge portion of this attack uh, for um, for Russia. As you can see, um, the MTLB, it's slow, it is loud, but it does take a lot of damage, and it and it puts out a lot of offense, and more, more importantly is it holds, I think it holds 18 people, correct? So you can move full squad, two full squads with this thing, 19 people. Um, oh yeah, exactly, 19 infantry um, it holds. Um, so you can move entire squads with this thing, uh, it is it's a key. I, I think it, it like who's winning and who's losing as command commander in Russia. A lot of times it depends on how they use this MTLB. Um, and if it dies early, you're in, a, you're in trouble. Um, and if it, uh, if it lives, it's going to be really tough for militia, uh, really tough for militia to, um, you know, make it work. So. Yeah. That, that MTLB is essential on the, the Russians push. And on the flip side here, um, the SPG Techie um, is pretty much the opposite of the MTLB, right? It's fast. It it packs a huge punch. It's really easy to kill, and it doesn't hold a lot of people. Only five infantry um, are sitting on that thing. But it is good. It's literal polar opposite of the MTLB because it's really good at killing that MTLB. So there's been some debate as to... Uh, I know the speed is high with this thing, but is it better to drive it around or is it better to use it as an emplacement on this particular map? Um, and we'll see what they do here. I'm curious if they're going to go try to kill the MTLB right away or kind of keep back with it. Um, but either way, it's a key point to militia defense because it is one of the only reliable ways to be killing that MTLB. Yeah, for sure. They get they get a uh, a lat kit per squad, but a lot of times those people are deployed on defense in the trenches. So it's make it makes it difficult to, especially when you don't know where it's coming from, to effectively counter it. And with that SPG tech, you have been able to move around real quick. I feel like that is a good a perfect counter if they use it right. Definitely. I mean, there's so the assets are so key. Be on this map because the range for uh for militia is kind of limited based on you know your objective and and yeah, the, the avenues that you have to go with so the asset use is like the, i think the defining factor for the this op um so you're exactly right it it, it is very important <laughs> where where and when those things are used
Uh, and so what you're looking at on my screen now, uh, if you're new to our ops, new to squad in general, what you're looking at here is a FOB radio. Uh, what the FOB does is it allows placement of deployables, things like um, like the hab that you're looking up that you're looking at to your left, the sandbags, all the machine guns, the barbed wire, everything it comes from this FOB. So what I'm talking about uh, resupplying with Logi and FOB points. It's referring to this radio getting resources to allow the squad leaders to build different things like the sandbags, like the, the bunker you see, um, think, and all, all that. And the goal the goal for for this op is to um, kill this thing. Russia needs to kill this thing. Motion needs to defend it. So it sounds like we're hopping on board with, with CMYK Matter as they do the platoon brief. So we'll give them a listen in uh, as, we, uh, as we get ready for this op. All right, brave citizens of Nova Russia. Today, those dirty Russian bastards are coming down here to destroy our little outpost in this trench off to our southeast. Now, thanks to our Adidas sponsorship, we've been able to acquire some excellent heavy weaponry to, with which to fend them off. We're going to have three, dish, uh, or three Dishka machine guns or SPGs, and we also have this wonderful SPG truck. We get a mortar, too. It's pretty great. Nice lots of RP7s. All they have in terms of vehicle assets is this one crappy MTLB. We got to take that out. Once we take that out, their their whole offensive is basically stalled because that's, their, that's big their big breach weapon that they can use to break through our lines and attack the fob. So how we're going to defend this fob location? Tedish is going to take half his squad and they're going to push in the Dishkateki here in Mike Six. You're all probably going to want to have your maps open if you don't already, just because it's going to enable you to actually see what's going on. So Mike 6, we have one SP-9 technical with uh, a fire team size element with uh, squad lead 1, Tedish. And they're going to ambush the Russian convoy if they try to come roaring down that road. Then, squad 2, the uh, material girls, are going to take a position uh, with one fire team in this little farmhouse up here to our north. And one fire team on the berm to our west watching to see if the enemy's trying to outflank us from that direction. Squad 3, Nasty Nate, is going to take a position on the hill. One fire team here in Juliet 9, one fire team in Kilo 9. They're going to make sure the Russians don't try to put their NSV machine guns up on the hill above us and rain death and fire down on top of us. Then, Squad 4, Trench Foot Incorporated, is going to split their squad in half as well. Half of them are going to stay right here in the fob with me and build, and the other half are going to go south and provide us an early warning in case the russians attempt to come at us from that direction any questions no it all seemed pretty straightforward all right yes. remember if your squad lead and yes, your sir. fire team leads go down please come back to the fob to reintegrate into the chain of command i don't want like half a fire team somewhere outside the wire when it comes time for the final assault and the russians are really pushing on us when they could have been reintegrated to the chain of command half an hour ago and received the information that the russians were coming I want to make sure that we do this very effective defense. Uh, try and commit yourself to killing at least two Russians before you die. Try and make sure that you spot the Russians before they spot you, and that you fire only when it's advantageous to do so. Don't don't get uppity and you know blow your trigger off early and cost your squad a bunch of kills just because you saw like one guy out in the open. Make sure that it's time to actually engage, and then when you do, wipe out the Russians with ferocity. All right. Fancy words, huh? Copy. Copy. Let's do it. Excellent. Aye, aye. Praise Adidas. Break it Adidas. out. We'll get a lot. We break it. Praise Adidas. Right. Uh, Thank so you. Thanks. we're going to reorganize this just a little bit. It's going to be... Actually, I think the track suits are under... All right. So that was the militia breakdown. Um, they're kind of fanning out now. Um, getting... They're prepping for live. They're going to kind of get their spots with, the, with their areas of assignment uh, the SLs gave them. Um, this will be an interesting one, man. I'm, I'm excited. Um, this thing has changed a lot. Um, we've tweaked it a little bit, and it's changed a lot with the fog being gone. I'm really curious to see how it plays out. I believe so. Yeah, same here. I love this game it makes a difference, even if just a little bit sometimes. Mm, I think it. Yeah, I think it makes a pretty big difference. I think for this Definitely. one, it will make a big difference because of the sight lines and where they're at. They'll be able yeah. to see things coming, and the enemy will be able to see them and how they have it set up from a lot further off. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, man. 
I think right, they're starting ready? to get ready. Yeah, so looks okay. So let's break this down a little bit. So what I'm seeing from Militia is most likely um, there's a house up here um, northeast of the trench, uh, north of the FUB, that I'm guessing looks like Squad 2, uh, which is Matter Squad, is going to be most likely taking in. Normally what happens is there's a squad broken down into the northern half of this trench, a squad into the southern half of this trench where the FOB is, and then someone out south uh, ready to react to anything coming south. So that's a standard uh, setup for this uh, this uh, op. I, I don't know if that's what they're going to roll with or not. It's looking like that's what they're going to roll with, though, um, as they've got guys scouting up the house and everything right now. So um, that would be my best guess, um, as that, that alpha is the most, like, the safest uh, spread of, of troops and the safest, um, like, coverage is the word I'm looking for. Coverage uh, and viewing, especially now they can see really far. Yeah, having played against Best Pony a, a number of times, he seems to be really effective at a good defense with spread out troops. And a lot of people like like myself, usually I like to hunker and, and fortify at small base. But Best Pony is really good about deploying people to key spots in a widespread and making a good a good showing of himself as far as defense goes. You know what's interesting is Pony is the only person I've ever seen super fob in your face. You know what I mean? Seems, <laughs> it seems like his, his, like, like when I super fob, it's, like, really defensive. And Pony is normally out here um, with, like, barbed wire and, like, all these, like, all these aggressive sandbag boxes, like, um, that are there for catching grenades and stuff. Uh, and it seems like um, I would bet that they lay more wire down. Um, they lay more wire down uh, south um, at the end here um, <laughs> because yeah, he really he's like he's almost aggressive with his he's almost aggressive yeah. with the super fob, which is like the weirdest thing I've ever seen. But he's really good at it. <laughs> he's putting a, a a literal spin on the best defense is a good offense. He's making you pay for every little inch. Yeah, man. So looks like we're popping off live here. Um, yep. One thing to keep an eye out for is scout placement, uh, scout placement of uh, of of their assets. So like the different IEDs and mines, um, that's something huge to watch out for. Um, and I don't think they've dropped them yet. But normally, like there's IEDs near the fob and also near the some of the woods um, to try to catch them by surprise. Yeah, that's another thing with the introduction of mines and IEDs that has really made vehicle play a tricky prospect at best. And it just really makes it, you think, how are you going to use these vehicles? And on the side with the mines and IEDs, what's the way that they think the enemy is going to attack with vehicles? It just really yeah. makes it for an interesting dynamic. And that changed a number of our ops as well. Just bringing in the, the mines it gives you another layer of defense. Yep. And countering vehicles that wasn't there before. Yep. So it looks like we have um, an IED that's near the hab in case stuff gets really bad and they're ready to pop it. Uh, looks like we have an IED at the southern end of the trench because they're kind of expecting them like I would to be coming in from the south in the deflate in the trench. And it kind of looks like um, he's actually being a little more aggressive uh, with his defense, which is good. He's got a group um, from Matters Squad uh, in this western woods here. The rest of Matters Squad is by this house in the north. So they've got this whole northern side wrapped up. And they're going to be preemptively, which I like, taking this southern hill as that's probably where the fire base is going to go, like we discussed earlier. So they're going to try to take control of this um, before anything nasty can happen. And I think it's a that's a good – it's the way to do an, uh, an offensive – that makes sense. Yeah, it looks like the MTLB stayed on that eastern side, and they just dropped off a squad here. Let's see. They just dropped off a squad here to the northwest of that trench there, more west. And they're just holding position, but it looks like that log logistics truck is continuing to head south with the rest of command and another squad here. Some fire so I'm wondering. From the MTLB. 
Oh yeah, so maybe they're planning to use that MTLB as a distraction and then set up on the south. That could yeah, be. Best... That would actually be an interesting plan. Yeah, and actually, Best Pony just called out that they're coming from their east, so that distraction gets him thinking that they're troops on the east. This is <laughs> this is interesting. Um, this is what I like to see. Oh, uh, so it's like we're may having. We have their their logistics truck, the militia logistics trucks running right past the. He's taking shots. Little Jin is taking shots at the Russian transport here on the south side. Looks like oh they know gosh. that there's a transport down here. So, this is so smart because um, because uh, Nasty Nate Squad is up on this hill already, which is where they want to set up with this laundry truck. That is crazy. They started taking... They're so close. They're so close. We're looking at the Lodgy truck that's like full and panicking, I'm pretty sure. Squad 3 oh spotted this, and it's been called. Yep, Nasty Nate has seen it, and they... Are they taking shots? Um, Not quite yet. Quite. Yeah, this best pony spread out yes. defense like we were talking about earlier is completely countered this sneak move. They know where they're at, and it looks like this Lodgy is going to try and back out. You can see on my camera here the entire militia force in blue is on this southern ridge that we were pointing out earlier. A good spot to put the machine guns. They're just saying sneaky weapons tight and this logi doesn't know what the people in this logi doesn't know what to do they just dismounted from the logi yep it's so od tap and probably a couple members of his squad here third person uh od tap hilo and it all dismounted i don't even know if they know they're there they're, they're playing it so smart yeah we have these outlines where we can see them easily but as uh, players in game, it's not so easy to spot. Meanwhile, we got this other squad uh, from Russia sweeping down the road, and they're actually, it's like, they're about to spot this militia force who spotted the Lodgy. So if they're too preoccupied by the Lodgy, I mean, this could be really bad for them if, if they get cleaned up. Yeah, it looks like. Muff is over here with command shadowed ritual, and they're pushing. They're pushing about eastbound, right toward, like you said, right toward these militia forces. This is what it comes down to, because this is where they're going to want to put the fob. This is how they're going to want to play this with a firebase up here. They played. They did a very good job of getting up here preemptively. Militia did, but they still have to execute on this. Copy. They're calling contact on the farmhouse. CMYK Matter just called that over command comms. We need to get you guys clear and clear it out. We need to get going. Yeah, so there's... Oh, there's got shot. Oh, let's see. Swifty Sky just went down one tap by one of these Russian troops here. Ooh. I, I want to say that was Family Phantom. Possibly Iron Tire. It was uh, actually... It looked like it was Slippery Pete. Slippery Pete was the one who actually... Uh, oh. snipe, sniped him. So Slippery Pete draws first blood here. Um, Good job, Slippery Pete. Yeah, and this is crazy. So there's an actual battle line on the south of this road right here. Racine opens up with that saw. They are, uh, taking heavy contact. Tap oh, gets a kill. Yep. Tap goes down. Some trades going on here. The thing is, is, is actually Russia has more people. Um, up here than uh, than militia does. Yeah, um, with the with that intention to push, they probably have a two three two and a half squads up there, huh? Yeah, and I actually think uh, was tap was tap squad leading. Od tap is one of Shadowed Ritual squad leads. Yes. So that is a problem for them, and the reason it's a problem for them is that tap kind of has to be the one to place the fob. <laughs> 
because he was a squad leader and he has the squad lead kit. So even if you pa- even if when you die in our ops, you have to immediately give up. When you go down, you give up. You go to admin camp. Tap has a squad lead kit. He was squad leading his squad. He's the only one who can place that radio, the fob radio, which allows him to place a fire base, and he's dead. This this Lodgy, I, I don't even know if this Lodgy actually serves much purpose anymore um, if there's no squad leaders up here to, to set up a fire base with. I mean, the best they can do is recover it. Um, but yeah. They kind of lost the initiative there with Tap dying. Well, as, I think as long as Shadowed Ritual survives, he might be able to place that as well. If he can get up there, but that would be dangerous for command to try and do for sure. And he's the one. I mean, he's the guy. He's the only one left. Yeah, it looks like um, Carpy's squad down here. They're holding up in this compound just to the east. Very close contact, just to the east of this trench. Possibly waiting for that machine gun to to spurt off and and basically give them a signal to move. But yeah, we are just to the east of that trench. And I don't think that the militia even know they're here. Mari so, E's kids looks like he's pushing up in that trench there. It might start creeping forward. Yeah, it looks like. That's actually yeah. a really good point. Um, is that there is a trench, small trench on the Copy east. That. So in, in the large it's trench, that's the main one. If you go, if you follow the, the field Everyone, east the the over the now. field, uh, there is a here, smaller here, trench on the east side, which is not a bad place to put okay. fire from. So that may be what they're going for. Right, we are taking light this has become down. a stalemate yeah, down I mean, south um, along down fire. Uh, this ridge. They've, they're, yep. slowing, they're slowly backing yep. off and going forward and backing off. No one's do, shooting much. It's very, very slow and very calculated right now. Looks, looks like... Let's see here. Looks like, yep, we're taking contact here. One of CMYK Matters fire teams has pushed out to the east and they have taken contact on, on this squad here by the Carpy squad on the Russian side. Lost my LAT. The contact yep, down. Matter just said they lost their LAT. That is going to be one less possible option to take down that MTLB as well. And Pure Paradise take down Tagsmen. Pure Paradise takes down Torched, leaving S Client all by himself out here to the east. So important note, uh, the FOB did get placed. It got placed far west um, on like the western portion. Of, we, I'm actually going to go ahead and refer oh. to this as Coyote Ridge since we have a Coyote Ridge operation that takes place on this ridge as well. Um, so that FOB actually got that placed. And the MTL, but the MTLB is creeping from the east. So the MTLB is creeping in from the east. They're taking con- and, and militia is taking contacts southwest. They're taking contacts northeast. So it's a hectic one. I mean, I got to imagine this is pretty calculated aggression from from Shadowed. Um, but it's very hard to manage when you're squad leading and you're commanding when you're taking contacts from like four different directions. People are saying a bunch of different stuff all in command comms. So. Yeah. This, those command comms just add an extra layer of chaos when you're squad leading. And uh, yes. it definitely makes things tense. So... Muff like- is actually starting to push up right now, leading this southern group across the Coyote Ridge. Um, he's going tree to tree here, taking a look, and looks like looks like um, Malicious just starting to fall back. They're kind of dinged up. Nasty Nate and uh, Thurman Merman both uh, took a couple shots, so they're in the yellow. Um, overall, this is a pretty... It's oh. a pretty intense stalemate. What did happen, though, is they did get the Lodgy truck out of where it was before. Rush advanced their battle line far enough that they were able to get that truck out of there, and so it's probably supplied the FOB, as you can hear. Um, oh, Grenade takes down. out this this militia machine gun. Piddle was on this machine gun. And they a grenade in here. That Carpy squad is continuing to push with aggression toward this, this house point, this barn point, to the north of that trench. This is the, what's left... What's left of CMYK Matters squad is trying to defend here. Putting shots out, but not doing anything. No hits. Yep. Yeah. It looks like Pure Paradise pushing right up to this wall. Snickers, Sergeant Nato, Carpy, the entire squad is pushing really quickly. Evan taking shots at Nato. Looks like he tagged him. They've only got four guys in this barn here. 
four guys squad to counter this whole squad house. push. Oh, grenade takes out Sergeant Nato, damages a couple more. So, you, so is this is this um, MG fire from this this firebase on on the ridge doing anything? Is it damaging anything, or is it just kind of suppressing right now? As far as this barn goes, where this assault is happening, nothing's hitting this barn. It does look like they're putting tracers on that that trench from afar, but not enough to do any damage to anyone. They've got so many sandbags up there. Actually, just makes it quick and easy cover for them. Yeah, I mean, it was actually... This is actually pretty well executed by Russia to, to not lose... Um, to not lose as many as many resources or assets as they could have. So everything's still pretty much up and cooking. The NTLB's still alive. They got their fire base up. They got decent positioning. Um, it's looking pretty good for Russia, actually. As far as yeah. having to assault this giant trench goes. <laughs> Absolutely. They're doing a really good job at cautious but aggressive. That's the best way I could put this push, at least here on the north side, the northeast side, the Carpy squad. They managed to take that barn from the defenders. That leaves the defenders pulling back into this trench, CMYK Matter, and the couple people that are left. He's got two guys left, it looks like. Oh, come on, just heal me. Oh, mortar is dropping on that fob. Actually, really smart, really smart, because militia does get one mortar, one times mortar emplacement. Um, so they're dropping some mortars in that fob. It's actually pretty accurate. So they they pulled them off for the time being. Um, I would do want to point out if people haven't noticed on the stream, um, militia has actually been getting constant supplies. They've actually gotten at least two lodgy runs that I've seen. So they're they are well and good with their economy. They've got a lot of points. A lot of build points to put down if they so choose in its best pony. So I'm sure he will choose to do so. Um, so I haven't been over to the trench yet, but I expect a lot of barbed wire and a lot of, of difficulty coming up here for the Russians. There's a heavy. Yeah, they've got this this MTLB parked here on the, the southeast side. Satan Panda Scope and FX1000 sitting here. Looks like Satan. Also one of Shadow Ritual's squad leaders. Spotting with his binoculars, giving bearings for the gun on this MTLB to shoot at. It's like, yep, they're taking shots. What they don't know is just behind them on the hill, there is three militia that have flanked around. Possibly what's left over of Nasty Nate's squad. No, actually, Nate's squad is is uh is pulling back from that ridge so they traded back and forth and they actually got out more or less healthy i think uh i think what we're looking at over here it, it might even no, it's not even it's not even command squad um they're getting flanked and this southern element for russia is is actually in trouble especially if nate's squad uh spots them out uh they can really collapse in on them uh so Again, like this is a really good positioning from Pony, and then his squad leaders this is all prep work that goes into um, that goes into setting up this kind of defense. Yeah, it looks looks like Muff up on that machine gun from Russia, just putting shots on the trench, keeping their heads down, and giving Carpy's squad a chance to push here in the trench. They just had a few mortars. They just had a few mortars land in the trench here. I'm not sure who was shooting those off, but they look like they killed one or two Russian troops. So that looks like maybe Carpy is waiting for a signal of some sort to push, but they have guys on both sides. Russia has guys on both sides of this trench, and Best Pony really only has one squad left in that trench. He's got the rest of them out defending away from the trench kind of a signature vest pony thing to do yeah and it works so, well it doesn't look good now but w yep. when 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 your forces are, are not necessarily all centered on the objective it's not a bad thing necessarily because it gives you a little bit of unpredictability and more maneuverability than everyone just chilling in a trench and just hoping they don't get grenaded or something um the mtlb has shown its its face 
uh, down south. You know, it, my guess would be that they're going to just make a push from both sides at the same time if they can with that MCLB down there. Um, but they're 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 trying they're trading back and forth with the southern element. I'm actually surprised that they didn't go south this time, uh, like hard push south. So um, I think that might have caught I think that might have caught them off guard a little bit, um, and they might have over allocated down here. Sounds of battle coming out here as everyone's just kind of taking cracks, um, trading some fire. Um, the squad that was uh, pushing across the ridge is finally grouped up with the MTLB and that squad, and they're starting to consolidate down, getting some nice kills uh, on um, rush or on uh, militia here. They pretty much did a, a textbook sweep. This is a nice like line they've got going here they're able to cover each other this is something that we cover um in uh in our basic training um which 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 most um pretty with which every op except for this exact one uh, will require uh, it's a nice line that sweeps through the through the woods and you don't miss anything it's really easy to hide under uh bushes and, and behind trees if, you, if you're prone um, it's like a really good job here yeah this is definitely Definitely looks like Carpy is pushing his squad in smokes and advancing. They are pushing, pushing yeah, on this yeah, trench yeah, really hard, really down. fast. Yep, we've got Muff shooting with the machine gun, keeping their heads down. Oh, they threw a grenade back. Pure paradise, and Carpy goes down. Carpy is down. Their squad lead is down. That's cutting the head off of a very effective, very effective push here. Hopefully, they can continue on with that. They've got all sorts of smoke cover. Hey, if they're already right, pushing let's in, let's it. go. Let's fucking back our guys up. Say what? Being on that HMG is uh, is the unsung heroes. On uh, the unsung hero of of ops, I think. You don't get a lot of kills, but you do a lot of damage, and you allow pushes like the one you're seeing now, plus the smoke, to happen when everyone's keeping their heads down. Yeah, and it's scary being shot at with that thing. You get suppressed really well. That's the big, big bonus of those 50 caliber rounds. Yeah, we've got yep. a pretty major offensive here on this trench. Yeah, I mean, the MTLB is still lurking. MTLB actually took one lat hit, but um, there is some dismounts from the MTLB. Um, but, you know, I... I I don't know how much damage they can really do to it. You know, we kind of showed how, like showcase in the beginning. You know, the MTLB can take a beating. One lad hit, it's not going to do it. Um, Tail squad's not going to do it for them. Not the toughest, but definitely not the weakest yeah, vehicle in the game. Awesome. Yes, and, and it's imp also important to point out if you're new to the one life stuff. Um, there's no, just there's no respawning. So what happened? Uh, it looks like, yeah, Nade went into this trench. Nade went into this trench and took out the one defender that had a line of sight on the entrance. Huh. So now Same we've got, up, huh? yep, that's something we cover in basic as well is a good spacing. That's something we, if you go ahead and sign up, you want to be part. Sign up for our, our SOTT basic, gets you a lot of good info that we use to make these ops last longer for, with your one life. You don't want to bunch up with your buddies. It's called what we call battle spacing. Yeah, and and, definitely. and as it was mentioned, like as there's no respawning, there's also no repairing of vehicles. So landing a lad hit on the MTLB might not have killed it, but it did do some damage to it, and it's going to make them think twice before rolling up anywhere, I think. Um, so yeah, in, e like and, in all our ops, except for the ones that are very specifically say, vehicles can re then rearm and repair you know there, there's none of that allowed so um it may not have killed the the, the mtlb but it's definitely thinking twice uh about where it's going now i'm healing hey uh I'm on RPG. <laughs> all right they want us to just keep pushing south couple more reinforcements coming from the south hey, here God, what was nasty nate squad trying to Make something happen here. 
the fob radio is still alive. Very important because that is the main objective. Hey, you need to watch that back blast. One down looks like. So like that was Krusty that got the kill. Yeah, Krusty the sailor, the down. only person left in the trench here, just putting shots down range. He knows they're there. Oh, I am reading That's it wrong. That's Red Stripe. Red Stripe, you're right. That is Red Stripe. I'm reading it wrong here. Oh, and, and there is a demonstration of why battle spacing is so important. One grenade took out It's Crispy and Sexyton. One Oof. grenade. That that's. Yep, it's that's a big deal. So meanwhile, we had um, we had Fig take out Juzu, um, who was trying to flank. So that side's a little bit more locked up than it was previously. As you can hear an IED popping off. The one that was on the far south of the trench uh, looks like it it exploded. I don't think it actually got any kills. Um, no, it doesn't look like it got any kills. I think it did some damage, but I don't think it actually killed anybody. Uh, it was a good effort, though, <laughs> to say the least. Um, they may, I think they still have one IED on the HAB, actually. I don't actually know if the scout that has that is alive, um, but that's a that's that's quite the last-ditch effort um, if, they, if it comes down to it that they pop that IED. Smoke's getting thrown. Yeah. Super Air, this time. The Neils and Dark Wolf. Looks like they're getting ready to push in further down this trench. Yeah, and, and that trench that we were talking about early in this up, the Russians are actually going to be taking it up. So yeah. again, as as uh you kind of lose focus of the objective sometimes with how crazy these ops are, but the ultimate the ultimate uh, objective here is to kill that fob radio that we were talking about. So when Russia, if and when Russia kills that fob radio, they, they will have won. We'll play the round out, um, but that's their ultimate goal um, is to take down that radio. That's sitting smack dab. Uh, actually, it's in the southern end of the trench this time, not in the middle. It's in the southern end. As that MTLB comes alive, put some shots down. More suppressive fire. Nothing new to militia this round. Yeah, the, the Neil's pushing up here, getting really close to that radio. He knows somebody's in this Habs unit. He's been shot at a number of times. Looks like he's gonna try and he's gonna try and clear this out. They're gonna peek different corners, aren't they? Hey, behind it, behind it, behind it. <laughs> Oh, and the Neil's oh. get great peak. It's not 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 a bad job clearing here. No, um, Neil's going slow and steady. Oh, Muff just lets loose a frag round. Woo. Oh, not playing around. Miyamoto takes out the Neil's. That peak putting his head around the corner in time to get it shot off. Muff's Very got another ready round primed. Oh, oh and he just hit short. the other side of the truck. So he hit the truck on the far side and the near side of this trench. Yeah, and actually Kenneth just went down right next to Muff. Muffs like looks like he's, he's starting to, he wants to peak. So bad he wants to be. I think he has a pretty good idea of where they are. Another oh, round goes out, actually gets the kill on the southern end of the trench. Yep. I think that's Jax threw a frag round into the trench and got Miyamoto. That leaves Carson. Carson is the only one alive here on the trench, surrounded by Russians. The hero moment. Muff's pushing up. Most checking. All right, he's getting close. Hold your fire. Give him a sec. Give him a sec. Shadowed Ritual pushing in with his binocs, getting sight on this trench. Muff clears out the hab bunker. XF. XF's going to get. Oh, XF takes down Carson. He gets the last guy. Oh, he got dinged up yep. in the process, but he did it. 
that is the last guy, and that is GG for this round. Russia I wins, think. managing to take every militiaman out. You know, it didn't go like I thought it was, like I thought it was going to initially, but it ended up in the same way, which is take the trench from the south. Even if that's not how they planned it, you know, that's not if, uh, if uh, that's how the way they planned it at the beginning. That's the way it sort of ended up. Um, that was a good one. That was a that was an exciting round, man. Some Absolutely. good grenades on both sides. A lot of good like mechanics, a good technique being displayed. Like good line swooping through the forest and good communication. Um, that's what we like to see. So as we're as we're wrapping up here, um, we'll be cutting away to a couple uh, awesome trailers that uh, our content creation team has put together for uh, for our, our trainings. Um, in the meantime, you know that'll be playing, and we'll come up with round two where these guys will swap teams. Um, and they'll be on the same the same people will be, will be on the team, but the militia will play Russia. Russia will play militia. Uh, in the meanwhile, in the meantime, um, enjoy the trailers um, and. Uh, We'll be answering some questions in the chat, um, and we'll see you in a few minutes for round two.